please welcome Galen to the stage. Girlfriends just don't know when to quit. She kept on nagging and complaining, but that wasn't enough. So I threw her against the door. Her head hit the handle and she fell to the floor. She had been furious before I pushed her. Now she lay on the ground whimpering, tears streaming down her cheeks, and all I could think was that couldn't have hurt. I barely pushed her. She barely hit the door. And I kept yelling at her, be a man, just be a man. Don't let the pain bother you. Just block the pain out. Forget it ever happened. That's how I did it. My dad used to hold me down while I twisted my arm back. The pain would be piercing. He would keep twisting until it would almost break and he would say, that doesn't hurt, quit complaining, be a man. So I learned to block the pain out. I would hold the rage in let myself suffer quietly, toughen myself up so I could be a man. In elementary school, I used to beat my friends up. I remember I had two best friends and I hurt them both. It got so bad that my friend's mom came to me crying. She said, quit teasing my son and hurting him. But her son was just so weak. It was almost as if I felt a duty to toughen him up, to make him stronger, to teach him to be a man. But he only broke down, and he only got weaker. We were in the second grade. When I became a freshman in high school, I got in the first big fight of the year. At lunch, he approached me on the street, walking towards me aggressively, ready to fright. I didn't think, I just did what I knew. I took him down, I had him pinned, choking him, getting ready to rub his face against the concrete. When suddenly I was pulled back, and while I was being held, he pushed me repeatedly in the face. He, I tried to kick him because my arms were constrained, but I missed. He hit me again in the nose. I could feel the blood gushing from my eye, and my nose was smashed sideways. At the hospital, they bent the cartilage back into place. When I got home, my face was swollen up like an orange. My eye was black and it cut open. My dad glared at me as if I was the most pathetic person he had ever seen. He kept saying, how could you lose? Didn't I teach you to fight? You never let someone back up. All I could think was how I had failed, how weak I had become. I would never lose a fight again no matter what it took. From then on, I never fought fair. It started with baseball bats, then went to knives. I always carried a knife, and then my friends started getting guns. I never preferred guns because I couldn't control my temper, and I loved to squeeze the trigger and watch things explode. So I stuck with knives and bats. I like to feel myself crushing things, breaking things, hurting the people that had hurt me, watching people suffer, now they can suffer like me. Over the years, I'd become numb. I blocked out the pain and I stopped feeling joy. I stopped being happy and I just used drugs. Horrible things happen. My friend stabbed someone in the back during a methamphetamine rage. Another time, my friend smashed someone's head against the curb. There were those that were practically beat to death with baseball bats and others who were tied up at gunpoint while they pissed their pants. There were those that threatened to kill me as I begged them on my knees not to crush my face. As I remembered how my friend's front teeth were smashed through his upper lip when my bro was thrown through a glass door and when my friend had died. I couldn't stand the numbness. I needed to feel something for all the horrible things I had done, for all the people I hurt. I would take my fist and I would hit my own jaw. I would headbutt the wall. I would punch my legs and smash chairs. Anything to feel the pain. I just wanted to feel again. 
One time, I punched myself in the face, and I gave myself a black eye. When I went to work the next day, they asked me what happened. I told them I fell down. I covered for myself. How could anyone understand? How could the abuser be me? I got to the point where I had to let my hatred die because I couldn't stand it anymore. It was time to break the cycle, to stop the alcohol abuse, to stop the violence of my father and the violence of my father's father, of all the men in my family who had killed in the name of honor. It was time to break the silence, to speak the truth about the abuse, to take responsibility for those I hurt, to finally be honest about who I wanted to be. It was time to break the cycle. I could not let this legacy continue. The women in my life, they were holding me accountable. They have become my greatest support, and they motivated me into action because they encouraged me to release my pain and cry. These women pushed me to stop the patriarchal and misogynistic behaviors and to work with other men who needed healing. I tried to come clean to all those I hurt. It was a difficult task for me to acknowledge the bad things I had done to people, to remember, remember the awful things I had done to women, to think about the things I had been through with other men. But I wrote down a list of everyone I had fucked over, all the people I had robbed, beaten, or lied to, and I read this list to my dad. Over 100 things I had done. It was extremely hard for me to take responsibility because it made me hate myself for hurting other people. How could anyone ever forgive me for the violence I had done to them? I wanted to run from my past so bad that I just wanted to kill myself. I asked my dad, how did I become so violent? Where did I learn this violence? I wanted my dad to acknowledge his role. Give me some insight into the violence of being a man. Instead, he told me I was born evil. And if I wasn't his son, he would have had nothing to do with me. You see, I told my girlfriend I would get help. And she chose to stand by me because I was willing to change. Because I had acknowledged my responsibility for what I had done to her. I shared with her pain from my past and pain from my childhood. And the things that happened to me that were contributing to my violent behaviors. I reached out to other men and women and I let myself cry. The memories that haunted me ran down my cheeks. I spoke the disturbing thoughts out loud until there was nothing more to tell. Then I began to listen, and I heard the stories of others. I listened to women talk about their experiences of being raped. I listened to men talk about their experiences of being molested and beaten. I listened to the pain in their stories, and I saw through my own self-hatred because I could see myself in others. The first time I hugged my dad in my adult life, he almost cried. He told me he had never hugged his dad, and he didn't think he was ever going to hug me again. I hugged him harder, and I said I loved him. He looked into my eyes and told me he could not believe I was his son. You see, I've been doing healing work for over 10 years. I had to go to counseling, therapy, I joined men's groups, I've been to spiritual ceremonies, spiritual elders, guidance, and all that to get to where I am today. It's not an easy journey, and it took a whole community of people that supported me through this process, from my girlfriend to my mentors, as well as my mom. I give thanks every day for the people that stood by me and believed in me and never gave up on me. Without them, I would probably be locked up, maybe even dead. It is time for men to tell their stories, for men to tell the truth about being men and begin the healing process, because there is no need for this pain. This legacy must not continue. How can I judge someone for something I have done myself, lost in the confusion of drugs, playing out the trauma of past abuse, using violence to survive in a cruel world, lashing out at a world just to be seen? So I've offered myself in service. I've chosen to be a witness of the pain of men, I've, to find respect for even the most horrific abuser and redemption for the most awful deeds. 
I am my brother as he is me. And there is nothing to fear. Let the truth of our stories and our efforts to create healing free us from the bondage of our suffering so that we may bask in the glory of our love and celebrate the day men learn to love themselves and love each other. The question remains, can we learn to love ourselves?